Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Rolleiflex 6x6 twin lens cameras. This is the Rolly T model. There are fundamentally three, three ranges. There's the Rolly Flex, which is the top of the range professional spec equipment. There's the Rolly Cord cameras, which are the consumer lower cost cameras. Then there are the Rolly T cameras, which sit in between the two. This is a Rolly T. What I'm going to do now is just talk over the basic features this camera offers. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail in relation to the differences between the various cameras. There's plenty of um, there's plenty of information online about that. So if you're a collector, this isn't really a video for you. Um, what I'm focusing on here is Rolly T's from a user's perspective. Okay, so Rolly T cameras, twin lens cameras, there's the viewing lens. You look through that lens, that's the taking lens, the camera takes the images through that lens. Twin lens cameras producing six by six centimeter square, two and a quarter inch square negatives on 120 film. Very, very high quality indeed. Doesn't really matter which model you buy, whether it's the Rolly Flex, the T or the Rolly Cord. They've all got very, very good lenses. Okay, let's, let's start with the loading. Loading is via the back, unsurprisingly. You pull this lever at the bottom around, and then there's a hinged arm here, which hinges up. You then open the back up like so. The new film goes into the bottom there. You pull this, uh, this knob out on the side to get the new film in. The leader then pulls around the spool, around the rollers there and there, and tucks into this, into the plastic take-up spool here. You then use the wind-on crank to advance the paper until you see the arrow on the backing paper align with the two red arrows there. Once the arrow is aligned, you can then close, you can then close the back, push that lever back down, slide that there back across, and the back will lock. You then use the wind-on crank here just to advance to the first frame. And once the, once the, the, the film has advanced to the first frame, ready to go, it'll stop advancing, and you'll see in the frame, window, frame counter window there, number one, ready to go. So on this side, that's obviously the, uh, the film rewind, uh, sorry, the film wind crank rather, which can be folded down like that when it's not in use. You also have the frame counter, already mentioned. The little um, chrome piece there, is on that side too, and that's the strap attachment. Rolly makes something called a scissor strap, which is quite a clever scissor type mechanism, which slides down into the top there and locks onto a pin behind that plate. So that side, that there, and that there is for attaching the strap. You might also notice there are a couple of um, black wedge-shaped levers there, and again on the other side there. That's for removing the top, but I'll come onto that later. Moving around to the front. Shutter release button there with on, on the Rolly T a fairly basic uh, lock which just lifts out like that. This lever here is the, the flash setting, so flash bulbs, electronic flash, or if you do want to use a self-timer there's also a self-timer um, function there. On this side of the lens you have the flash sink, or the flash connection rather, and here is the, the, the most important uh, control. This is the, um, the lever you, you use to set the aperture and the Shutter speed. Now, I'll hold this like this so hopefully you can see. If you pull this lever out, you can then turn it to change the aperture and the shutter speed. If you look just here, you'll see the aperture, sorry, here rather, you'll see the aperture and shutter speed um, settings change. Once you've got the desired combination, you then release the button here and it locks that exposure into position. So if you use EVs on a, on a, on a handheld meter, you can see you're actually locking the EV um, at the desired setting through that window there. And once that's locked, you can then move the, the shutter speed and aperture setting to whatever uh, setting you want without changing the exposure. A really simple, nice, straightforward um, um, device. Moving on to this side, we have the two knobs there and there I've already mentioned. There, you pull those out to take the, the, um, the plastic holders and the film um, out once the back's open. Focusing, the, the focusing racks the whole front standard backwards and forwards. On some Rolly cameras, you'll also see a meter 
a meter there uh, with a meter cell on the front. Uh, here there is an ASA setting. It's a non-metered camera. That ASA setting is just, just, a, just a film reminder effectively. Just moving on to the bottom, um, I, I've obviously mentioned the opening device here. You've also got a, a tripod bush. This is a three quarter, three, a three eighths fitting. You can also get a quarter inch fit, fitting. On the back, you have just a film, a film uh, reminder and a basic exposure calculator. Going on to the top, now this is a waist level finder. It folds up, you view like this. And this is by far the best way to use the camera, in my opinion. You can take this off and you can change this for a prism, which then hold up at eye level like this. I don't personally like it. In my view, and it's only my view, if you're going to use these cameras, I think this is the best way of using it. It works really well. There's a little pop-up magnifier here too. So if you push in the front section there, the magnifier pops up and that allows you to look down at this focusing screen for micro adjustments. As I mentioned, button there or lever there, lever there, push those down, pull the viewfinder back, the viewfinder comes off. At this point on the T model, you can also just pull the screen frame back and then leave, I fold this up here and there you can now change the focusing screen. You can also get in here to clean the mirror and the rear of the lens or the rear of the taking lens, which is quite useful. So. Interchangeable screens are available. Um, you can get bright screens for them as well, which are fairly handy. When you're buying the camera, make sure the screen is clean because they do mark very, very easily. Okay, so you've decided to buy one of these cameras. What do you need to look out for? What I'm going to do, do now is just quickly run through some of, the, some, of the, some, of the, some of the most important checks to make. Now, these cameras are 50 plus years old, so you have to be very, very careful when buying them. Cosmetic condition is very important. Make sure you buy something that's clean. If it were me, I'd much rather have a clean Rolly T that's been well serviced than a tatty Rolly Flex, even though they might cost the same sort of money. Similarly, I'd much rather have a clean Rolly Core that's been serviced than a tatty Rolly T, even though they may cost the same sort of money. If the camera's in clean cosmetic condition, you can be confident that if you do need to have servicing and repairs carried out, that won't be an issue. If you've got a tatty, worn, scruffy camera and it develops a fault, you can have all sorts of issues getting them fixed. But if they've been little, they're seldom used, usually as mechanical cameras, they can be fixed, they can be serviced, and they will serve you for a long, long time to come. Okay, so, so what do you check? Obviously cosmetics. Check the top, make sure that's clean, no nasty dings. Make sure the bottom edges here are clean, no nasty dings there. They're quite heavy cameras and it's quite often to see them, see them knocked. If you see them knocked, walk away unless they're very cheap. Make sure there isn't a massive amount of paint showing through on the black. Make sure there are no dings on the, on the front standard there. So just, just wind this backwards and forwards. Make sure it's smooth. If it's been knocked, it'll be graunchy. And make sure there's no damage on the corners all around here. Put a film through, obviously put a film through. Testing with film is great, it won't show you everything. So just go through just go through the, the, the checks I'm going to, uh, going to outline here, but do put a film through as well. One thing that'll show is that the wind mechanism is working and not worn, and it'll also show you that the shutter speeds are, are working well. Now the most likely thing to go on these cameras if they haven't been serviced is the mechanical shutter. So when, you, when you're checking it, just, just set it at a second, fire the shutter, make sure it makes a healthy set of sound that lasts roughly a second. You won't time it obviously, but if it lasts roughly a second, you're probably okay. So it'll be click, whir, click, open, time, close, about a second. That's all you can really do. Then go to half a second, do the same. It should repeat itself and it should do it for half a second. And clearly that should be less than a second. Then look, listen to a quarter, an eighth, a fifteenth. You should, you should hear the duration reducing each time. It shouldn't stutter, it shouldn't stick. Often they do, and if they are stuttering or sticking, the, then a, a service is necessary. Not the end of the world, but a good service is going to cost you £100, £150, what's that, $150, $180. That's, a, that's, a, that's quite a substantial amount of money and that's something you do need to take into account if you're buying the camera. So check the shutter, make sure the, sh the shutter sounds as it should. 
Then have a look at the glass. Now this is probably the most important thing because this is the one thing that you can't easily get fixed on these cameras. Open the back, as I showed you earlier. And you can do this one of two ways. You either hold the back open with your thumb, look through the camera and fire the shutter. Set it to B or set it to T. Um, hold the shutter open and look through from the back and make sure that the lens is clean. You're looking out for, for fungus primarily, that nasty spider-like growth inside the lens, but also look out for dust and scratches. A few little spots of dust, not necessarily a problem. A few scratches, not necessarily a problem, but that impacts the price. But if you see any fungus inside, I'll post a, a link above to explain more about that. If you see fungus inside, don't hesitate, just walk away. It's not worth the hassle. So look through the lens with the, the shutter open and obviously the aperture uh, open up full, opens up full. Do the same with the, um, with the taking lens. Now you can't look through from the back because uh, there's, there's no way of doing it. Shine a torch in this way. And also with the taking lens, you can also shine a torch in this way, just maybe with a magnifier, just to make sure it's clean inside. So often these cameras have been stored for a while without being used. That will lead to two problems. A, fungus, and that is almost impossible to get fixed, and B, mechanical problems. The mechanical problems can at least be fixed with a service. So just quickly in summary, check those three things. Check the cosmetics, check the glass is clean, and check that mechanically it's clean. Um, and as I said, always, always factor a service in. Even if a camera like this is working well now, unless it's been serviced in the last five or 10 years, it might, it will probably, in fact it will, need a service in the next few years. So when you're buying one of these, just, 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 be, just be aware of that. They are mechanical, they're incredibly reliable, they do need to be looked after. And if you don't get them regularly serviced, It'll, they'll cause, it'll, it'll, it'll cause problems. You, you can't expect that a camera of this age that's fully mechanical just to, to, to just keep going on forever. That's just not reasonable. So to, to be aware that you will have to at some point get, get these serviced. As I said, the cost isn't cheap, but it's not a fortune and it's an, inverse, an, an investment certainly, certainly worth making. I hope that's been useful. If you've got any questions, please stick them in the, uh, the comments box. Um, above, uh, below rather. Otherwise, uh, subscribe and like, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.